what's going on youtube this is marcus and i'm back for another review i'm here to talk about american horror story apocalypse season eight episode four um first things first thank y'all for tuning in if you've not already subscribed to the channel be sure to click that subscribe button also be sure to click that thumbs up button also be sure to click the notification bell so that you will be notified whenever i post uploads and videos to this channel um first things first i was a little bit confused because at first i thought that maybe mallory and dinah and coco maybe weren't witches themselves i was thinking maybe that the spirits of the witches that were a part of the coven may have been like transcended into them especially because like i said in my review for last week when I mentioned the fact that at the end of Coven, Zoe and Queenie were still alive. Um, I and and before this episode, I had forgot all about the fact that Queenie had went to the Hotel Cortez and got killed. Well, okay, never mind. See, it's all it's all coming together because she also was in Freak Show, and I was just sitting here thinking, well, she was died in the hotel court that's how is she in freak show but you know i'm gonna get into all that everything like i said everything is coming together so um the episode starts off so from what i understand mead was actually a real person back in the day now a lot of people and in, including myself was thinking because he told me that you know he had designed her she was a prototype of a woman that he remembered from his childhood somebody who took care of him now a lot of people were thinking that he was referring to jessica lane's character constant because if you remember at the end of murder house she was the one that was raising him um you know after she kidnapped him from his mama or whatever she was raising him but apparently i'm assuming something must have happened where where constance died or either got murdered and then he, he came in contact with me um and me was a devil worshiper and so i don't know if she knew that he was the son of the devil or if you know how that all came to play because there was a scene where she had made dinner and she had mentioned the fact that she had killed all three of her husbands and he had prayed you know giving praise and honor to the devil and then at the end of this prayer instead of saying amen he said nema so um also we find out that the outpost three we already knew that it was a boys school but it turns out that it was a school for male witches or warlocks um we got a scene where there was some warlocks that were like supposed to have been practicing like spells or whatever and um there was one guy who was kind of like i guess he was like the slacker of the group because they was he was always late for practice or whatever and he you know had forgot a spell book or whatever and so in the midst of this some of the hierarchies from the male coven or council whatever you want to call them they came and visited them and they played a video where it was a guy who had been arrested for stabbing a a butcher um but the the guy the boy was basically saying that i you know i didn't do that you're not gonna find my footprint my fingerprints on any of those knives and the the, the investigator or the cop he was really being a, a dickhead um you know the way he was you know treating him and beating up on him and so we got to a scene where it was a part of the scene where the guy or the boy well i had already knew that the boy was laying there but they didn't we they didn't reveal that until like the end like the end of that little part where the guy you know did something with his powers and that thing you know the security guard was up against the wall and then he was on the ceiling and then he was on his 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 limb his legs and his arms was twisted all out of proportion and so next thing you know we see him on his knees and he's looking at the video camera saying help me and his head explodes now the one guy i forgot what his name is but he's played by cheyenne jackson he was just thinking well maybe um it was some kind of demon possession but everybody else is thinking that he's probably a warlock and whatever 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 so 
later on uh, the guy Ariel goes to the prison to see Tate I'm sorry to see Lane and then he was basically asking him you know what it was so basically what happened was um Mead was at the butcher shop trying to buy a butcher's head for her inc incantations and the butcher dude was like well I can I can sell you like the meat you know but I, I can't sell you no head I'm not about to sell you no goat head for some of your crazy you know sacrifices or whatever and she was like you discriminating against my religion or whatever because you know they do consider Satanism a religion and so she was like girl I'm about to go talk to your manager so when she walks off Lane and walks up to the dude and was like girl you was very rude don't you ever talk to her like that again and he was like girl who do you think you is and what you gonna do you need to get on up out of here and take that crazy B-I-T-C-H with you so next thing you know Lane didn't do something with his powers and, and it was some knives that was sitting up against the wall and they all go flying into him and he gets stabbed up so the guy pretty much tell Lane and like girl you know you didn't do anything wrong you know I'm gonna take you somewhere you know you're a special child and you got special abilities and I'm gonna take you somewhere that's gonna teach you how to master your abilities or whatever so he uses his powers and unlocks the prison doors and Lane was looking like girl you got some power too or whatever so when they was leaving out the guard was like girl where you think you're going and Ariel says well you know he's innocent until proven guilty so he's coming with me the guard was like, no, we're not either. So he threw the guard up against the wall. Um, and, you know, he was he, like, he going to just wet himself for a while, you know, but he not going to feel anything. And so Landon was like, I'll make sure of that. And he does something and breaks the guy's neck and the, and the dude dies. So he brings Landon back to the house. I thought it was real cool that, you know, the, that the boys were kind of like so welcoming of him. Like, girl, welcome to the home or whatever. You know, nice to meet you. And so, they put him to the test because they were kind of, um, what was I about to say? Yeah, they put him to the test and they have him do all these different things like trying to, they was, he was supposed to tell them where this book was hidden at, but he, you know, was able to, excuse me, he was able to actually find the book. He practiced the power of teleportation and also um some other power i forgot what it was where he was able to change the weather in the room and he made it snow but then after a while something took over him and he was about to turn into a blizzard and um he was just like girl you know i don't know you know what came over me i had no idea that was in me and i was confused because some of the stuff they had him doing the, the Supreme can't even do that. So, we're going to jump back to the beginning where Cordelia was, you know, talking to Mallory Diner and uh, Mar uh, Coco, you know, trying to tell them what's the tea and, you know, um, I forgot how the conversation went. But Dinah says, girl, you know, I'm not trying to get into no battle or do this and do that. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I ain't got time for that. And so this is the reason why I thought that maybe Queenie's spirit was in her. Because she said, you know, you couldn't defeat anybody with that backwards voodoo crap that you be doing. So I was like, well, maybe that's Queenie's spirit that's in her. And she also mentioned the fact that she put a protection spell on them to where they wouldn't know who they really were like they wouldn't know that they had these powers now mind you mallory had even said you know when she was being interviewed with lane and that she felt like it was somebody inside of her that was trying to break out um and that's how they were able to find that's how they knew where they were at because i guess the protection spell i don't know but either way but the protection spell is how they was able to find him so um, and also, uh, they also mentioned the fact that going back to Ariel and Landon, when he brought him to the boys' school, um, he had said that they were forced underground because when Cordelia went public about the coven, um, you know, there was a bunch of riots and people didn't want them in the neighborhood or whatever, and they burnt, you know, that whatever that place was that they were in the beginning, they burnt it down, and the only thing that was left was like that statue 
that we see like that 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 leads to the entrance of the outpost three um and so we go back and we see what you know going back to where cordelia is you know running the school or whatever and we see where chloe zoe was teaching a class where they was able to take white roses and turn the petals different colors and so we saw one girl that was kind of like showing off a little bit because she turned her now mind you all the other girls they were turning their rose red and i think she turned hers blue then she made all the petals fall off and then she turned the petals into butterflies and then the butterflies turned back into petals and then the petal fell from the ceiling and when one of them landed in cordelia's hand the petal turned back white and so cordelia is kind of looking like well maybe she could be the next brain so in the midst of this, we find out that they get summoned to the board to the council for to, to a council meeting at the boarding school. Pretty much, the the male school is basically telling her like, "Girl, you know, we got this this boy here who got all these powers, and he could probably match the supreme or beat the supreme. So she wants to put they want her to put him to the test of the seven wonders. And her now." For whatever reason, they don't feel like a male can be the supreme. Um, it's very reflective of how when when Venable told Landon, like, girl, you know, if you know, men ruling the world or men being in charge is the reason why the world is in the shape it's in now. And I guess maybe they feel like if a man were to become the supreme, he would be power hungry. I guess now. I feel like that's the real reason why she didn't want to put him to the seven wonders because they don't feel like a man would be able to handle all that power. Now she tried to use the excuse of, you know, I lost one of my most promising witches, Misty Day, and you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And so they pretty much told her, like, girl, what about your other witch, Queenie? You know, you, you, you. The one guy was like, girl, you left her for dead because she was black. She. And so this is when she goes into the backstory talking about how, you know, Queenie, she found out some some kind of way Queenie went missing. And when she was able to find her, she found her at the Hotel Cortez and, she, you know, and we saw where they kept making attempts to try to leave, but she couldn't rescue her. So she ended up having to leave her there. And, 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 and Queenie was like, girl, go back to the coven because they need you. Now... You know, she was like, you know, I did everything I can, but none, none of my spells and my incantations was able to bring her back from the Hotel Cortez. You know, the power inside that hotel is far beyond my comprehension and my ability. So, you know, it is what it is. Now, in the midst of this, we go upstairs and we see Landon. Now, I thought that he was listening to the conversation, but we see what he was like in this days where... Um, and I know these people in these cars beside me probably looking at me like, I know he ain't talking to himself. But anyway... He was in a daze, and we see him sketching out a picture of the Hotel Cortez. So he goes to the hotel, and he busts up in there. Now, mind you, ever since Queenie got trapped in that hotel, her and James Patrick March been playing gin rummy. So he busts up in there like, girl, I come to take you home. She was like, yeah, right, because mind you, not too long before, uh, you know, uh, Cordelia had came to try to get her up out of there, and it didn't work. And so... James March tell Queenie like girl you need to go with him you know you know he's gonna be able to get you up out of here so they leave we go to get Madison and she's in her own personal hell where she's working at like a some kind of electronic store and the lady was giving her hell because she sold her a crock pot and she was trying to say the crock pot didn't work now my thing is why are you gonna bring the crock pot back to the store with, with whatever the crap is in there that you cook that you cook and not only that, but how long that stuff been in there that when she opened the pie, it was maggots and stuff all in there. Now, the lady's whole thing was like, girl, you know, y'all fly it or y'all warranty or whatever says that, even, you know, even if it's no matter what condition the stuff is in, I can bring it back. And Madison told her girl, like, I can't accept this. So the girl was like, you know, wanting to talk to the manager. Now, mind you, she was getting pissed off because the one dude... They was like, girl, we know you from somewhere. She was like, yeah, I'm an actress. And they were saying that she thought she was Lindsay Lohan. They, she was like, girl, you know, I'm not Lindsay Lohan. You know, and they was like, girl, well, obviously you must be a nobody because we don't know who you is if you're not Lindsay Lohan. She was like, well, obviously you a nobody too. And, girl, and I think one time they was come, trying to say she was one of the Olsen twins. And so we see when Lainey come up in there, snatch her up. 
And so at the end of the episode, you know, Cordelia basically told them, like, girl, it is what it is. My The council's decision is final. Ain't no seven one. So as they leaving out, we see three sets of feet walking. Now, and at first, I thought it was Misty. Because if y'all remember, Misty got trapped in her hell in the midst of doing the seven wonders. So at first, I thought it was Misty that that they was walking with. But as the camera pans up, it was a Queenie, Landon, and Ma uh, Madison. I mean, Queenie, yeah, Queenie, Madison, and Landon. So now I was confused why Queenie had that funeral hat on, girl. But anyway, so when Cordelia comes out and sees them, she passes out. Now, I'm not exactly sure. Now, all of this, all of this happened three years before the blast, because, like I said, if you notice, Landon had short hair. Or what have you. So, you know, all this happened before the blast. Um, but I love how they are incorporating, you know, some of the other seasons. Because I, because we all thought that it was just going to be a crossover of Hotel, I mean, Coven and, and Murder House. But I think it's going to be like a, jo a crossing or a joining with all the seasons. Because, we, like I said, we saw a part from... Um, hotel in this in this episode, so I need to get over. So we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, this episode was really, really, really good. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to leave your comments down below in the comment section. If there's something that I didn't talk about that you want to discuss, feel free to leave it in the comment section. I do respond to the comments and the words of uh, my girl Jay Lee from Jay Lee's Corner. Don't just be a subscriber, but be an active subscriber. Uh, share this upload whatever it is that you like to share videos also be sure to follow me on my social media which will be in the description box down below also if you missed any of my previous uh, apocalypse reviews you can just find that playlist in the description box down below and i will talk to y'all later peace